Welcome back to Baron's New Vegas Heavy Energy Weapon Guide. And this time we'll be going over the first heavy weapon that just about every new player will encounter first. The Incinerators. A cross between the future grenade machine guns and the Flambe 450 from the original Fallout games, the Incinerator is really the pyromaniac's best friend, as it is both fuel efficient and leads to a lot of flaming enemies. The Incinerator is more like a fireball launcher, combining respectable damage with long range, striking a balance that reminds players of the Flambe 450, but it also is really its own thing. The Incinerator is also the stripped down and less powerful version of its Fallout 3 predecessor, the Heavy Incinerator, which also makes an appearance in Fallout New Vegas. Wielded by Hellfire Troopers, it is not as notable an addition in Broken Steel compared to the Tesla Cannon, which was also added in that DLC, but the Heavy Incinerator can try. As the two are so similar, the Heavy and the Normal Incinerator, we will also be touching on both as they appear in New Vegas, since they are basically the same gun, although the heavier Incinerator is rarer and much more expensive. The real life version of this weapon actually lies in the development of incendiary ammunition for rocket launchers. After World War II and the pesky application of the war crime label to man portable flamethrowers, spewing jellied napalm all over their foes, the armies of the world still needed a flame weapon as its use against armor and men was still considerable. Against men, the wide range of intense heat leading to casualty if not total kill, while flames on a tank or an IFE could result in a total kill or a mission kill. At the very least, the flames would compete with the engine for air and detonate any extra fuel or munitions on the outside of the tank, reducing its threat range. For the United States, this developed into the well-known M202 Flash, which despite what the movie Commando led many people to think, is actually designed to fire all rockets at the same time, and all those rockets are using a pyrophoric aluminum, making it much hotter than napalm and would splash on detonation, which was on contact. The flash does stand for Flame Assault Shoulder, in case you were wondering, and in case you were thinking that the Department of Defense had all the greatest minds in the world. Sadly, none of these inaccurate and wired firing missile launchers made it past the end of the world, but it seems that the idea of a less disposable system using a similar ammunition concept was worked by the Enclave and spread by the remnants of both the Enclave and Master's Army. The incinerators, both heavy and the normal one, work by forming the flammable liquid into a mass which is fired as a slug. The pilot light ignites the projectile as it sails over it in an arc towards the target, exploding on contact with anything. How the explosive part is accomplished with just the flame of fuel is anyone's guess, but it is in keeping with the M202 Flash's ammunition. Based on that description, it would not be a surprise that the incinerators do three types of damage. Going over the lighter incinerator first, it only does one damage on impact, but does 20 explosion damage in a small radius. And finally, it does four burning damage for eight seconds per second, against all that it hits. Altogether, it does 25 damage on hit, and it is technically automatic firing two shots per second when the fire button is held down, but it can be fired faster in semi-auto. So the DPS, if you hit with both shots, range from 40 to 42 damage, so a near miss is just as good as a hit with this weapon. That being said, the incendiary damage of this weapon is 1 for the hit and 4 per second, so it actually benefits more from the explosion side, however the pyromaniac perk also benefits this. It does take only 1.5 seconds to reload and has a tank capacity of 30, which means its sustained DPS is 38.2, but you reload it a lot less than you think. Now, it does have a nice spread of 0.1, meaning it can reliably reach out to this sight range. Additionally, it has a good crit performance for an automatic weapon, at a 1.67 times multiplier. The incinerator's fire rate is just so low that it actually has a positive crit multiplier while being an automatic. However, it only does one additional damage, so there's that. Now, for the Heavy Incinerator, it is actually not that large of an upgrade. It does 15 damage on a direct hit, 20 explosive damage in a radius, and 8 damage per second for 5 seconds, which is only 8 more damage from DOT than the first one, but it is better given the image engine limitation. 
It also shoots four per second and actually delivers on that in full auto. This will give it a DPS of 80 to 140 depending on a direct hit or not. With a smaller capacity of 24, but the same reload of 1.5 seconds, it has a sustained DPS at 112 if your aim is good. The spread is worse at 0.5, but that is better than most heavy weapons and about the middle for all the weapons. It is better than the ballistic ones for sure. Now the crit performance at 0.67 isn't as good as the original incinerator, but it does a whopping 5 extra damage instead of 1. Now lastly, both of them have the same cost in VATS at 50 AP for one shot, making both of them poor choices for VATS at around or less than one damage per AP, if you let the dot play out. In other words, leave the high cost to weapons that need it, like a minigun or a grenade or the AMR. Now both perform similarly due to explosion damage being the deciding factor. But since each is reduced by DT, the incinerators are actually quite poor at killing well-armored enemies. But the pyromaniac perk, since it luckily benefits the explosion damage, can get through some of this. They even look the same for the most part. The only difference when an enemy hand is the third tank of fuel piped into the weapon on the heavy incinerator. But when you have them in your inventory, the difference is clearer. The lighter incinerator is truly a beginner's heavy weapon, at only 25 energy weapons required and 6 strength, with a weight of 12. The heavy incinerator takes 100 energy weapon skill and a hefty strength of 8 to use right, all in a 15 weight package. The next thing you'll notice is the price. The normal incinerator costs 1,300 caps, making it the cheapest heavy weapon in the game, a fourth the price of a minigun. The heavy incinerator is the second most expensive non-unique in the game at 7,200 caps. Neither have mods so that is the price they max at and luckily the ammo is very cheap for the damage, especially with such a low consumption rate compared to the flamer. They both have a durability of 995 shots, same as the flamer, and that drops to 329 shots if you're using homemade flamer fuel. Although with the incinerators, you are shooting far less, so that will go a lot further. As for the standard flamer fuel, it only costs one cap per unit, making it very efficient in the incinerators both monetarily and damage wise. And it has them deal a lot of damage per cap of ammo. A silence 22 pistol sneak attack takes the cake there, but this is great for a heavy weapon. The homemade ammo is made in batches of 20, out of two corn, one sugar bombs box, and one box of detergent, selling for zero caps per shot and causing three times the wear as standard ammo. It's actually usable in the base incinerator if you rush science in the early game, since merchants with flame of fuel are rarer. And that is really all there is to say about the ammo. Obviously the heavy incinerator costs more to keep, but 1000 shots go a lot further here than in the flamer. The lighter incinerator is actually very common and can be found all over. Most famously the escaped convict leader in Prim has one always and is the typical source of this weapon. In the Repcon test site the Jailer has one and in the Ruby Hill mine there is a super mutant underwater that has one. Additionally even normal fiends can carry them. Now both the heavy incinerator and the lighter one can be found on the super mutants around the devil's throat in Black Rock Cave and up the climb to Black Mountain. And for the heavy incinerator only, the super mutants in the Jackrabbit Springs and in CR heavy troopers can carry this weapon. Now it goes without saying that the Vendatron and Gloria Van Graaff can both carry these weapons, however considering that a lot of the sources of these weapons are before one reaches New Vegas, it would be weird to buy them there. Now for a conclusion, it is an easy one. As both of these weapons can be found on enemies and they can be repaired with one another, there is a simple answer to this. The heavy incinerator can easily replace the normal incinerator once it starts showing up, and the incinerators as a whole are much better than the flamer unless you're exclusively fighting ghouls or other melee centric enemies in tight quarters. 
the range, explosive radius, and very visible firing arc make it easy to engage at the middle distance. The ammo efficiency and damage makes this stand out, easily supplanting more expensive ammo and weapons like the grenade machine gun and several other grenade methods.